Welcome. My name is Ray Klein. I'm a certified master inspector here at InterNACHI at the House of Horrors in Boulder, Colorado. Today I'm going to give you a quick inspection tip on testing electrical devices. We're going to cover receptacles, switches, and dimmers. I'm also going to cover what you can do with the results of your tests, how to determine what those tests mean. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my plug-in tester. This is one that uh, most all inspectors use. It can give you up to six different results. First thing we're going to do with our plug-in tester is we're going to go over here to this top row of receptacles. We're going to plug in here. Two of the lights are on on the indication. The middle one and the right hand light is on. So if I look at the top up here where my guide is for the lights, it tells me that this receptacle is wired correctly. So let's go ahead and move on. This one perhaps has a reverse polarity. We've got a center light on and the red light on the left hand side is on. So I look up here on my guide. The guide tells me that I have the hot and the neutral wire are reversed. This one is an open ground. I'm just going to show you an outlet I've got here, a receptacle that's got the wires on the back. If this is telling me that I've got an open ground here, basically what that means is that the ground wire is not attached to the yoke of the receptacle. This can mean a couple of things. It can also mean that this house does not have a grounded system. Sometimes what can happen is homeowners can update the devices in their houses and they can forget to put the ground wire on the receptacle. Some cases when the contractor wired the house, he too can forget. So this could have a few different meanings. Let's go ahead and move on down the line. This one's correct. Let's go to the GFCI. This one's showing an open ground as well. Same thing. Ground wire probably didn't get placed on the yoke of the receptacle. Let's go down to the next row and see what we got down here. Okay, we got a, a reversed polarity here, which that means if you go to the guide on top, it says the, the neutral wire and the hot wire are reversed. Basically, that means on the receptacle where the silver screw is, that's where the white wire, the neutral wire, is supposed to be. And where the copper colored screw is on the other side, that's where the hot wire or the black wire should be. The reverse polarity just means that these two wires have gotten reversed on the receptacle. Let's go ahead and move on down. This one is correct. This one here has got an open ground as well. Another open ground. Correct. Correct. That one's correct. This receptacle at the bottom left here is upside down. It's mounted with the grounding pole up rather than down like the remainder of these receptacles. So it's still showing that it's wired correctly. It just means that whoever put it in mounted the receptacle upside down. I want to caution you on a couple things on these testers. The results of these testers can all, only be as good as the tester itself. So I, I really highly recommend that you buy quality equipment so you can get good results. On the top of here of our little indication device, it shows the hot and the ground is being reversed. A word of warning on that, that's an extremely dangerous situation. That means that the hot wire has gotten terminated to the grounding termination point. This grounding termination point is connected to the yoke of the receptacle, which is the mounting part of the receptacle. If we wire the hot wire to that, that means the outer part of the metal part that's exposed to this receptacle can be hot. That's extremely dangerous. That should be red flagged immediately in your report. The SOP tells us that we have to test a representative amount of receptacles in the house. The definition of that is we have to do a small sampling which represent the larger amount of the receptacles in the home. I will recommend that you test the receptacles that you can get to to have easy access. You're not required to move any bookcases, TV stands, stereo cabinets, anything of that nature to get to the receptacles. Let's go ahead and move on over. I want to cover dimmers. Whenever you inspect a home that's got light dimmers in it, it's important to operate these dimmers. 
It's also important to feel what kind of heat that they're projecting. Typically a dimmer will project some heat. I would recommend that it not be over 120 degrees. What can happen with these dimmers is a homeowner could put one of these in, they've undersized it, they're rated in wattage, their, their ratings can range from four, five, six hundred watts. The fixtures that they're feeding potentially could add up to more than the rating of the switch. So it's important to feel these, operate them for a little while. If they're too hot, you should put that in your report. Uh, you can use an infrared camera to determine the actual temperature of these if you like. But as a home inspector, we're not required to calculate wattage or anything like that. So, you know, it's really up to you to determine if you think it's too hot or not. But if it ranges up into the 130 degrees, then I would definitely recommend an electrician take a look at it. Let's go back over to our board over here. We want to talk about some switching. These switches here are typical single pole electrical switches. They're just one function, on or off. This is a typical single pole switch. Very common on residents. It's got the ground on the top. On this side is one of these wires is going to be our switch leg. The other one is the hot wire. Usually there's not a lot that goes wrong with these. Either they work or they don't. However, as a home inspector, when you go through the home and you're operating these switches, always listen for sparking or buzzing in these switches. If you hear anything like that, I would highly recommend that you encourage your client to uh, get an electrician to take a look at it. Now I'm gonna move on to what's called a three-way switch. This kind of a switch typically is used in a hallway from two different positions or in a stairway where you have a stairs, a landing, and another stairway going up to the upstairs. These switches can be located at multiple locations. They are two position, either on or off. However, when these are in a different position, you can also go to the other location of another switch and operate it from there. On these switches here, we have a ground wire, goes to the ground screw, which is always green. The white and the red represent what's called travelers, and the black is the hot. And these travelers, when you operate this switch, is actually the path that goes to the light fixture to operate that light. I'm not gonna get into this too far, but just keep in mind, if it doesn't operate from either location or just one location, you should put it in your report that it needs to be investigated by an electrician. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to talk a little bit about a circuit analyzer. This is just another method that home inspectors can use or another device to test electrical receptacles. However, this device gives you a lot more information when you plug in. If I plug into this receptacle up here, on my readout here, it shows that I've got all three lights are on, hot, ground, neutral. So let's plug in with our other device and see what that means. That means that this device is correctly wired. With this circuit analyzer, we can go down through different levels to see what the voltage is. We can see the percentage of the load on it, of that circuit. It gives you different results, current, voltage, and whether it's wired the correct way. Let's go to one that we know is not correctly wired. Our lights on the outside are blinking off and on. That's telling us that we have a reverse polarity. There's our voltage, very low current on the circuit. So this device basically gives the inspector more, a lot more information than this little device up here, the plug-in tester. It's your choice which one you would like to use. I use the plug-in tester most all the time. It's quick, it gives me the information I need. I will encourage you to, uh, when you get ready to purchase some of this equipment, that you go to the inspector outlet in Aranachi. We carry all this type of equipment and we do have quality. So keep that in mind. That's your home inspection tip of the day. We'll see you next time.